Hello, this is William McKissick with Schoolie Mitchell, your expense reduction specialist. And remember my word of caution, this is not my day job. I'm not a professional interviewer, but what I'm trying to do is support and promote local businesses across social media. And today I have with me Chris DeBarry. Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you, William, very much. It's a pleasure to be here. It's, it's my pleasure as well. So to kick the show off and, and let people learn a little bit about you, I'm going to just give an overview and then we'll get straight into some questions. So, so Chris is a, well, Christopher, uh, attorney Christopher DeBarry is with the law offices of CDB Injury Law, a personal injury and criminal law practice. So Chris, tell me, tell me a little bit about yourself and how you get into this type of, of legal practice. Well, I've been in practice for about 21 years now as an attorney in Florida. I'm originally from uh, New Jersey, a little short town in New Jersey called Point Pleasant, where I grew up. Uh, attended college at Montclair State University, uh, where I majored in, uh, in English and um, uh, became an attorney because it's really uh, something I was interested in because it gives me the ability to sort of use my abilities, my talents to help people and um, particularly people who've been injured and really, really need somebody to be an advocate and a friend and an ear uh, for the problem, somebody who's gonna aggressively and effectively pursue their claims so that they can uh, have the things that they need. Um, so, you know, and, and I got into the profession because it, it interests me and my older brother is an attorney and, and he encouraged me and things like that. And uh, you know, 21 years later, here we are. So it's kind of in the blood. So Chris, tell me, um, th there's many personal injury lawyers out there. I mean, there's tons and tons of them. Why would, why would somebody choose to work with you? And, and kind of like as a kind of add on to that question, where does the criminal law practice fit into your whole legal practice? Oh, well, you know, you have a lot of uh, choices as far as personal injury lawyers. I mean, if you drive down the highway, you see my, my, my competition and a lot of my friends on billboards. Um, now, while they may be everywhere on billboards, I am literally everywhere for my clients doing what they need. Mm -hmm. um, you will deal with me and not with a case manager. I don't pass you off to somebody else. You know, you get the advantage of a smaller firm that can actually work your case personally and re interact with you personally, uh, really get to know you well. And if I know you well, then I can present your case a lot better. Uh, many times with the bigger firms, you're going to not even know who your lawyer is until many, many months into the process and certainly not have access to them on a 24 seven basis like you do mm -hmm. with me. So that's a major reason why. And I think it gives people a lot of uh, feeling of being self-assured and a lot of confidence um, knowing that the, uh, the, the buck isn't passed. Like, here's your attorney, it's me. And mm -hmm. you can reach me and talk to me with questions. You know, many, many, many clients have come to me from bigger firms saying, yeah, I really regret having signed up with them. I didn't even know who my lawyer was. Yeah, I would get that. The personal touch, it's, it's kind of like any business owner. If you're working with the owner of the business, you're going to get a higher level of service guaranteed because they're totally invested in the business. And the kind of other part to that question was, where does the criminal law fit into the injury law practice? Well, they're, 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 they're sort of separate. I started my career as a prosecutor and, um, you know, uh, uh, criminal law is sort of a natural sort of fit for somebody uh, to defend that's prosecuted. Uh, it, 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 you know, they, the criminal and the, and the personal injury are kind of different. They're just two areas I specialize in. They're not really related. Mm -hmm. um, and they're very different as far as what they demand from you. But, you know, it's part of my practice. It's a smaller part, but, you know, I've got, I've got 21 years experience in handling criminal cases. So, you know, I think I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> so, what what does what does it look like working for you, working with your practice? If I'm a client and I come to you, what what does it what does that process look like, and, and what what does the fee structure look like? Well, the process is the first thing we do is we talk. We sit down. I basically explain in really really fine detail exactly what the process is going to be like, what you can expect, what you will need to do. You know, and essentially, you know, you get better and I do the rest. Mm -hmm. And we discuss the medical treatment, um, the need to consistently treat. Uh, we discuss what the process is like as far as interacting with the insurance companies because they're a very big part of this. And I am the go-between and I am the person that insulates and protects my client from otherwise being taken advantage of by, by you know, corporate interest. Um, so that's a very, very important part of what I do and uh, something that I acquaint the clients with um, and basically uh, take them through that process. As far as the fee structure is concerned, uh, typically speaking in criminal cases, I charge a retainer 
And um, if the retainer is exhausted, then I bill an hourly rate above the retainer. Now, personal injury is a little bit different. In, in the state of Florida, we are not allowed to represent you in personal injury cases any other way than on a contingent basis. Mm-hmm. So I can't charge you by the hour for my work. I can't charge you for the hour uh, by retainer for my work. I can only recover if you recover. That's the contingency. So typically speaking, we charge a third, 33 and a third for any settlement pre-suit of the gross amount of the settlement. That's pretty mm-hmm. standard across the industry. 40% if we're in litigation, um, and that's all up to a million dollars. And it's a sliding scale downward in terms of the fees um, once you've reached the higher numbers. But you know, for the most part, people's cases are not million dollar cases, which is good because those are horrible cases. You don't wanna be a, you don't wanna be a plaintiff in a million dollar case. It means that you've been very, very badly injured. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting that as the, the numbers go up, your fees go down. Um, and also as a lay person, anybody watching this video, I, I didn't know that that was part of the law in Florida. I just thought that's how personal injury lawyers work because it's how we work in Schooly Mitchell. We do our expense reduction audits. We don't charge any fees until we're successful in, in, in getting um, lower prices for our clients. But it's, it's kind of like how we do it. There's no legal... Um, there's no legality forcing us to do that that way. I didn't actually realize that with personal injury law, it is the law um, to not charge any fees and, and only do it on a contingency basis. That's an- interesting. So anybody watching this, if you've learned something, if you didn't know that, you know it now. Um, and by the way, please um, contact um, Chris at his details below. Um, Chris is actually a personal friend of mine as well as an excellent lawyer in, in his areas. Um, I highly recommend his services. I highly recommend Chris. He's one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet and he really does give you that personal touch so uh, i've just had an injury or or i think i've had an injury i think i might need a lawyer and so when when should somebody approach a lawyer and what what does that look like right right away um and 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 i'm not just saying that you know uh but but really right away and there's a reason for that um there are things that have to be done right away Um, evidence has to be gathered has to be preserved and evidence will uh, disappear you know, the identity of witnesses will disappear. You know, um, you know, there are those things I encourage people to do at, say, the scene of an accident to get photographs of the vehicle, get the identity of people that may be witnesses. But, you know, obviously, the quicker you hire an attorney, the better off you are in terms of posture, because the basic the insurance companies start working against you the minute the accident happens. Mm-hmm. So you need somebody working for you. Um, as far as medical treatment is concerned, as it relates to that, you know, you have 14 days to seek treatment under Florida law under the no fault statute. So unless you want to lose use of your no fault benefits in an auto case, treat within 14 days with a medical provider. But, but as far as when you contact an attorney, that's different. You really should do that right away. Shouldn't hesitate because at, at the very least you're getting good information, whether mm-hmm. you contact me or another attorney. Yeah, and before my, my final thought and my final question, Chris, just on the, on the medical part, the, the, the medical person that you need to see after an accident within 14 days, that can be like a medical doctor, a chiropractor. That's the kind of person you're talking about, isn't it? Yeah, um, it, it extends pretty far. It can be a medical doctor, an osteopathic doctor, a chiropractor, a dentist, a nurse practitioner, a mm-hmm. physician's assistant, uh, a licensed massage therapist. These are all uh, practitioners that are allowed to bill no fault insurance, and okay. all of whom would be acceptable to see within the first fourteen days. So these pe- these people are effectively verifying yeah, there's an, inju- an injury sustained, and this is what the injury is that we are treating. Yeah, and, and, and with the changes in the law in 2012, that became necessary, whereas for 25 years before that it wasn't, but now it is. So, you know, we, we have to abide by it. But fortunately, um, you know, if you go to the ER, that's automatic. You know, you, you're sure. at the ER within the day of, day after. So uh, it, it does encourage people to treat because that's really the only thing the law requires a person to do is make themselves better and not get worse so they don't become a burden on society. And that's yeah. that's socially a good thing to yeah. prevent that from happening. No, well, thanks, Chris. That's really good information for any viewers watching this video to, to understand how it works. Um, and again, please reach out to Chris at his details below. Um, please like and share this on social media. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel where this video will be as well as all the other places. And, and as a final thought, Chris, um, what does success look like working with you in particular as a personal injury slash criminal lawyer? <laughs> Honestly, success is a whole, happy, satisfied client. 
And that's, that's pretty much it. You know, I'm able to do for my clients what they need, able to make them whole and make them as happy as they can be made, make sure that they have the things they're going to need in life moving forward after a tragedy occurs. Mm -hmm. Um, and if I can do that, then I am successful. So essentially success is the person being as whole as they possibly can be after that trauma or injury. Absolutely. Uh, fantastic. So again, anybody watching this video, please reach out to Chris at his details below. Chris, thank you very much for coming on the show. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here. And, and what a wonderful educational session this has been. A oh, pleasure to be here, William. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks, Chris. I'll now hand it over to Dave for the weather.